So everyone, welcome to Blackwood Engage Layout and uh, welcome to its new home. I've had quite a number of people have uh, asked me for a tour. So we'll start on the outside. So those of you who've been following progress, normally you'd be looking at uh, either a very large hole or the grey slabs uh, that I built for the base. But as you can see, the building is now in place. Um, the building is four meters wide and it's uh, three meters in depth. So let's go up and go into the layout. <clears throat> so firstly, uh, now we're inside, you can see I have uh, a considerable extra amount of room on the right hand side of the layout. Um, it's just over three feet. I've got an extra space. Um, that's obviously uh, allowed me that the, the top corner is where I'm planning the helix, which is why I'm trying to keep that pretty clear at the moment. But for the very first time, I've actually got a workbench. I built uh, this workbench uh, last week, very, very simple. It's actually a five foot long piece of uh, pine, plain pine, with uh, six uh, B and Q standard le legs in the bottom of it. So, um, I will, obviously there's a lot of stuff just laying on top of it just now. That's all got to get sorted. Um, obviously, I'm thinking of getting the uh, the kits you can get. I think you get them from Hattons, where you can store all your paints because all my paints are still actually in the house. Um, but as you can see, the boxes now those boxes used to be under the layout uh, but as you can see they're now stacked almost up to the ceiling uh, I can still get it actually some more boxes up so if I uh, come round this side so as you can see there is three feet between the door and the front of the layout now um, in the layout when it was in the bedroom I had exactly the same amount of space um, the room was a bit wider um, than the, the, the extra three feet that I have here uh, but there was a fridge freezer and there was the clothes uh, drying rack so although um, the room was an extra say five foot uh, wider than the layout I only ever uh, had use of three feet and this is what this replicates so it's exactly the same amount of room at the front of the layout as I had before um, as you can see when I come up here the one big difference is this side of the layout, I can now walk up it. Uh, I swithered whether or not just to put the layout back into the corner, but um, after some discussion with my wife, uh, we decided that what we would do um, is, is actually bring the layout out a little bit. So that means I can now come all the way up here. And these are views that you will never have seen uh, in Blackwood. You've probably never seen the fact that there's actually a wee cottage thatched cottage on the top there. And you'll never have seen the fiddle yard from this angle. And uh, you've probably never seen this road bridge, uh, which was obviously done. And you can see obviously the back end of the motor power depot as well. Just coming around here, uh, ignore the engine because it's the wrong engine. You'll see one of my Christmas presents running around, which is the QA. Uh, nuclear flasks from Revolution Trains. So as I come back around here, uh, this here uh, was the only thing that got damaged in the move. Um, this board that it sits on is six and a half feet long. We managed to get it out of the bedroom. We managed to get it down the stairs. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. The board was sitting on its side and I went to open our French windows to take the, tr uh, the board out and I promptly kicked uh, the top of the uh, chimney stacks off. So uh, schoolboy error, but obviously uh, simple enough to fix with a bit of uh, glue, so that's fine, they're all back in place. Uh, as you can see, double glazed door, double glazed windows here. Um, the only downside, uh, you'll notice that the lighting is actually in a conduit. Uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. I had some issues with my electrician, uh, so this was the best compromise we could come up with 
so that when you actually come into the room you don't see this, this is actually hidden, you have to turn around. Uh, but the big difference is that if I come down here, it's absolutely clear. Uh, before when I was in the bedroom, along that back was solid with all the boxes that you've seen and also down this side it was solid with all the boxes. So now, uh, I know there's some few bits and pieces just lying there, they'll get tidied away. It's actually empty, it's completely empty. So uh, the lighting wise, much better than uh, my old room. Uh, the bedroom had appalling lighting with the fact that I had to have some uh, picture lamps sitting uh, inside, uh, overhanging the layout. Now, uh, I have a six foot LED uh, batten up, up in the, the, the ceiling. Uh, this side of the layout is absolutely crystal clear. The fiddle yard at the back is also crystal clear. And the uh, main station here is also clear. The only bit that's slightly dull is this side here. Now, I had thought of maybe reinstating one of the uh, picture um, LEDs uh, and I tried it, but it really didn't actually give me much more room. So I think the solution will be a freestanding lamp up in the far corner, uh, which will uh, illuminate this side of the layout um, as, as, as well as, as, as uh, in the rest of the room. That being said, uh, it's still actually, uh, it's still better illuminated here than it was uh, up in the bedroom. Um, as you can see along the back there, there's a small vent window as well. And you can see it's uh, finished to a fairly high standard uh, with uh, ceiling joists, etc. Uh, and the floors obviously all came uh, with a laminate uh, floor covering to put that in for me as well. So that is the inside. This is Blackwood's new home. I've got plenty of room to move about, as you can see. Uh, it's heated by this uh, non-oil filled uh, Dimplex heater, um, which has got four settings, it's got a thermostat, it's got four settings. I only have this on, um, basically it goes from uh, zero to six. I have it set uh, just at two, and uh, it comes on and off throughout the night, uh, it's just not on during the day. And when you come in here, if you happen to come in here at 9 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock at night when the heating is on, the temperature in uh, this building is about 21, 22 degrees. It's actually too hot. Um, so that kind of proves that the insulation must be working. Uh, we've had a couple of really, really frosty nights. Last night, uh, the temperatures here were uh, minus uh, 2 through the night. And the lowest the temperature went to through the night here was uh, around 10 degrees because obviously the heating's not on permanently through the night so there'll be parts of the night when the temperature in, in, in the room here does actually go down but even at 10 degrees, 10 degrees is fine um, and the highest the temperature went last night um, just looking at the thermometer was 17 degrees so a temperature range of 7 degrees uh, obviously when it comes to the once we get through the, the, the winter months um, these temperature ranges will, will it kind of move up um, because even if it's a dull wet day um, you'll still be getting an outside temperature of maybe 8 or 9 degrees so in here will probably be 14 or 15 degrees in the spring, summer and probably early autumn. So as you can see uh, the layout is moved, uh, it's in its new home, uh, I've tested it all, as far as I can see everything seems to be working as we just look at the QUA nuclear flask coming through here. As I say, it's the wrong engine. It should be a DRS engine or an EWS engine, but I haven't brought them out from the house yet. Uh, and of course, I can now come right up to this back corner. Um, and you can see, obviously, the, the fiddle yard are empty, apart from one train. Um, and you can obviously see this back section here that you've only very rarely uh, ever saw it. It was very difficult to film because I had to squeeze in to film it. But now um, I don't need to squeeze in and I can follow and track this locomotive without any problem at all. I can walk right the way around. There we go. All the way around. Absolutely great. Fantastic. I can even follow it the side of the layout, which I was never ever able to do. 
One other thing um, that I will have to change is that uh, if I come back here, uh, this signal gantry, now this is scratch built, I, I built this myself, it's out of a racial kit along with uh, some bits from CR Signals. Paul Folds at CR Signals uh, very kindly uh, gave me uh, dummy signal heads etc. Because this signal I never thought would actually be seen because the layout was in the corner, it doesn't work. Uh, and similarly there is a, another signal here, these are dummy signals, they don't actually work, but obviously now I can get round uh, and actually show you them. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, that's now going to annoy me, the fact that uh, they uh, are not actually working. So these signals will need to be changed um, at some point. So there's another little project. Uh, I think some of you will never ever have seen um, this side of the uh, MPD with the, all the buildings up at the top. So, uh, a very short video because I see a lot of people did ask about uh, seeing the actual building and having a tour of it. So uh, that is the tour. Uh, thanks everyone for um, who have watched my videos throughout uh, this year, uh, even some of my live streams. Um, I did try to do a live stream yesterday but uh, <laughs> it ended after 15 minutes because the internet crashed. Uh, I was babbling away to myself and then realised when I looked at the chat that nobody could actually see anything. So that's why if you look at that uh, video, um, you'll only see uh, 15 minutes. So all it remains for me to do is hope everybody has had a really, really good Christmas. And I hope we have a better uh, new year. And uh, I will catch you all uh, very soon on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.